Well, good morning, church. I'm a little bit sad for a couple of reasons. First of all, to um, say goodbye to my uh, sister. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Gabriel. I'm a brother, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely miss her in the church, but I will also miss her uh, at home. But um, we're so confident that the Lord has plans for her in, uh, in Uruguay. Also, I'm a little bit sad because I don't see Daniel Fermint in the building, so who's going to give me the amens, the feedback? <laughs> Will you take the role, Avert? Will you? Come on. Very good. I'm just joking. Um, yeah, so Peter uh, van der Meijden last week gave us a beautiful um, uh, sermon about love is humble, and today we're continuing the series, the love series with love is respectful. So... I will try to, uh, to scratch the service about what it means to, to be respectful, uh, what biblical respect uh, truly means. So um, let's get into it. First, um, I want to go to the Cambridge Dictionary about what the word respect means. And it says, admiration felt or shown for someone or something that you believe has good qualities or ideas. And I was hoping that the word respect would be incorporated in the love chapter. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, love is gentle. Um, but I didn't see it. But it does say this. And in 1 Corinthians, it will be on the screen, uh, first, chapter 13, verse 4 and verse 5, it says, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. And verse 5 says, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. When I read, it is not rude, I was talking. I got it. This is the opposite of respect. So I looked it up on Google, and um, actually the opposite of rude is not necessarily respect, but it means being polite. So the meaning of polite is, um, being polite means having or showing behavior that is respectful and considerate of other people. But I thought, okay, that must be the same thing, right? Um, it looks so similar. But there's a difference between the both of them. Because in a polite way, I can say something very disrespectfully. So it's not the same thing. I won't give any examples today, but um, I hope you, uh, you catch the point. Um, so respect actually goes further. It is more loving than being polite. And I have a passage, a passage of scripture I want to read with you in Luke 7, uh, which will talk about respect. And um, let's get into it. It's uh, 14 verses, so it's a long story, but it's an, uh, it's an incredible story, I believe. Let's read it. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had, who had invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told them this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces of silver to the other, but neither of them could repay them. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? And Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust of my feet. But she washed them with her, with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss. But from the time I first came in, she had not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of the gewoonte, of olive oil, to anoint my head. But she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. 
so she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said among themselves, who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Who has read this uh, story before? It's a pretty famous story about uh, Jesus where he gets anointed. And in this context, the anointing means uh, to rub or to smear something with. As we saw that, she, uh, that the woman smeared rare perfume, expensive perfume on her feet. But in this story, we see that Jesus makes a distinction between the inaction of Simon the Pharisee and the actions or the deeds of the woman. Three examples. We see that Simon did not wash the feet of Jesus when he entered his home. And this was a normal custom you did for your guests when, you entered, when they entered your home at that time. But the woman, on the other hand, washed, her, washed its feet with her tears and dried it with her hair. Then another example. Simon didn't even greet Jesus with a kiss. That was normal at the time as well. And it's still normal in, in other parts of the world, like Argentina, I think, and Uruguay. Um, I, every time I go on holiday, I need to get used to it a little bit because I find it kind of awkward to kiss other men on the cheek, but it's normal there. So here we only uh, do it with women, the three kisses, but then men as well, give them, uh, they give themselves a, or they give each other a kiss. And lastly, Simon did not anoint Jesus' head with oil. And in research, I read that this was a mark of respect with an honored guest. People walked in a burning sun of Palestine some distance, and this pouring oil on the head was like a refreshment to them. Simon chose not to do this to Jesus, but what did the woman do? She not only grabbed the oil to put it on his head, but expensive perfume and rubbed it on his feet. And that was very unusual. So this story tells us something the woman treats Jesus with a lot of respect, even though she had a bad reputation. And she shows that by, by her actions, by her deeds. And Simon, the Pharisee, the religious one, he doesn't do it. He lacks respect. If you love much, you will always respect much. But if you love little, you will respect little. And biblical love will always show itself in respectful behavior to other people. It will show in, in some type of action. You can say to yourself, yeah, but you know what? I, you, they know I love them. But if you're not showing that, you're actually acting out of love. Let's do a self-check maybe. Do people feel better or worse when they're with you? That is a way to discover if you've, you are a respectful person. Do they feel inspired, appreciated, and respected? Or do they feel worse, smaller, and unappreciated? You know, I can feel very charged up with some people, but I can feel unappreciated and small with other people. Here are some qualities of highly respecting people. I'm going to quote five. Highly respected people, respected people, they control themselves. They don't lose it when they are angry. They control their tone, face expressions, and overall body language so that no one can detect how mad they are. Number two, they are good listeners. People give more respect to people who snap less and listen more. There's a reason why this quote, man of few words, is a famous line. Thirdly, they are helpful. People earn respect by being ready to lend a helping hand or an ear whenever they're needed, whenever it's needed, or notice an opportunity to help. They admit their mistakes. They, they own up to their mistakes. They don't make excuses. They look for opportunities to move past them, and they do better next time. And lastly, they are loyal even when it's tough to do so. I mean, it's easy to respect people, right, who have all these beautiful qualities. But what about people who are not so easy to respect? How should we as believers respond? I heard a preacher say, we as Christians don't fight a spirit with the same spirit. 
we fight a spirit with the opposite spirit. And that's true. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 30, uh, 43 to 44. And it says this. You have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It's a famous one, right? But there's um, something I noticed in the beginning of this, uh, of this passage, of verse 33. Because isn't it remarkable that it kind of contradicts itself? First it says, you have heard the law says, love your neighbor. I mean, that's good. And hate your enemy. And then it, Jesus says, no, love your enemy. Why is it seems like the Bible contradicting itself there? Well, it isn't actually. Because note that Jesus says, you have heard instead of, it is written. The religious people of that time made a law, quote unquote, that if someone is your enemy, you have a reason to hate them. But that was never God's intention for respect. He wants us to respect even those who hate us, even those who persecute us. But Jesus took note of that, and he knew that in that culture, that was something that was going on. That was something that was being accepted. So Jesus needed to correct that. But if we're honest, how tempting is it for us in our culture as well to disrespect people and to be disrespected? Nowadays, when you don't agree with someone on a moral viewpoint, you can lose all respect in a moment of time. You can get, how, who knows the, the, the term cancel culture, you can get canceled if the media is behind you. All of a sudden, you lose all respect, not just for one person, but from a lot of people. And it's so tempting to, to go with that flow um, and to be disrespected, but also it's tempting to disrespect people who are not, um, who don't have the same viewpoints on something, etc. So yes, it is not strange when you hear quotes to your whole life, you have to earn respect. I mean, to a certain sense that is true, we have to earn respect, we have to grow in this qualities, these good qualities about being a respectful person. But what if people won't respect you? How do we respond? You know, we as Christians, we don't respect people based on good qualities only. Otherwise, loving and respecting anyone who hurt us, let alone our enemies, would be impossible. We respect people based on their worth and value as a human being. John 3.16, the famous verse says this, that God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And God was not talking about the world in a sense, the round globe with the trees and the plants. No, he was talking about the population. He was talking about the people. He was talking about every single person. He sent his son and he shed his blood for every single person. And it says that he loves every single person. Also people who don't know him. And based on this fact, we should respect and love every single person as well. Even those people in our lives who have hurt us, who have mistreated us, who are difficult to respect. But we may not have real enemies that uh, threaten, uh, threaten our lives or put us in danger, but we all come across those people who are difficult to respect. And let me clarify, respecting people does not approve with their actions. It, does not, um, it doesn't have to say that you have to be best friends with them, not at all but we're called to respect them for the fact that they're loved and created in God's image. I want to show you another example in the Bible that talks about the effect of respecting others, and it's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. And it says this, It is God's will that your honorable lives, or your lives full of respect, should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, Yet you are God's slaves, so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. In other words, don't think you have an excuse to be disrespectful because you belong to God. Verse 17, it says, Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect 
the king or respect the police, whoever is in authority in this country. I will repeat verse 15. And it's, if, verse 15 it is, re, it, sorry, it is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. Remember the woman that anointed the feet of Jesus with expensive perfume? And what about Simon the Pharisee, who accused that woman in his mind by saying she's a sinner and accusing even Jesus for not knowing this woman is a sinner and that he's not a real prophet? But Jesus silenced his thoughts. And why did he do that? Because he saw the honorable deeds of that woman and he knew her heart. If there's one thing that I want you to know today about respect and about respecting others is this take home. It will be on the screen. Your actions will speak louder than words. It's a cliche, but it's biblical. And a lot of cliches are biblical, to be honest. Many wisdom that we hear about in the world come from the Bible. Not everything, but a lot of things. The honorable deed of the woman silenced the accusations from Simon the Pharisee, and she did not even use a single word. In the story, it tells us that the woman did not even say, I love you, Jesus, forgive me, Jesus. She just fell at his feet, rubbed the feet of Jesus, and by her deeds, she was forgiven, she was saved, because her actions spoke louder than words. And there's one important point of the story that the book of Luke that we just read, it didn't include it. And in Matthew, it does include it. And it says this, Matthew 26, 13. It says this at the end of the story. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Your actions speak louder than words. Last time I will repeat it. You know, at the end of the day, your family... Your church, friends, co-workers, whoever, unbelievers, anyone in your life, they may not remember your words, but they will always remember your deeds to them. I remember someone from years, years back. I was on holiday, and um, I was in Uruguay, and I tried to go every year. And what was this pastor? My mom knows him. There was this pastor who, um, who I didn't know he was a pastor at the time, but he just treated me and my sister and my whole family with such respect that I don't really remember what he said to me. And it, I think I was a teenager, 16 years old or something. Now I'm 23. I still remember how I got treated. I, still I feel a kind of a little bit awkward in Uruguay because I speak the language, but then at the same time, it's not my first language, so I try to avoid people that are not my family. But he treated me with such respect <laughs> that if I see him again, I just want to give him a, a big hug because he made me feel so good. And I think then I can testify she knows who I'm talking about. That's the power of being treated with respect. So who is it in your life that you can respect a little bit more today with your actions, with your deeds? I think it's so important. I think it's so important that we not only say things, but show things by our actions. Did you treat them with respect? Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word is so rich about every topic that comes from love. And Lord, we come today to you with a humble heart and we all have areas in our life lord that we can improve and also on the topic of respect and love lord we ask you that every single person here individually lord will have a just a revelation of what it means to respect other people speak to us god who we can respect more speak to us who have, we have perhaps disrespected help us to um yeah, to go along with the people who have disrespected us and to love them anyway, like your word says. Change our perspective about that every single person is loved by you and created in the image of God. Help us to respect today a little bit more and this week and from this point forward. We cannot do it on ourselves, but Lord, we know that with you it's possible. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.